ഹായ് ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ഏവർക്കും എൻ്റെ ചാനലിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം സോ ടുഡേ വി വിൽ ബി കണ്ടിന്യൂയിങ് ദ സെഷൻ ഓഫ് റേഡിയോഗ്രാഫി ഐ ഹാവ് സ്റ്റാർട്ടഡ് അപ്പ് വൺ സെഷൻ ഫോർ റേഡിയോഗ്രാഫി വിൽ ബി കണ്ടിന്യൂയിങ് ദാറ്റ് സെഷൻ ഫോർ ടുഡേ എലോങ് വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് ഐ ഹാവ് എ വെരി ഗ്ലാഡ് ന്യൂസ് ടു ഷെയർ വിത്ത് ഓൾ മൈ വ്യൂഴ്സ് ഓഫ് റേഡിയോഗ്രാഫ് ഓഫ് ഫാമിലി ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ ഇൻ ദ ഫോർ ഫ്രണ്ട് ഓഫ് ഓപ്പണിംഗ് ജോബ് ഓഫേഴ്സ് ഇൻ പ്രൈവറ്റ് ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽസ് ഇൻ യുണൈറ്റഡ് കിങ്ഡം so all those who have got hcpg registration send your cvs they will be shortlisting and call forwarding for an online interview i'll be sharing the email address in my description box you so that you can directly send your cvs those who have got hcpc registration since they are also providing two tier sponsorship so that you once you have qualified you can directly apply to united kingdom so it is a very glad news for all the radiographer family as i said in my previous session i have started a few of the whatsapp group related with radiographic coaching scpc query cmrt queries nhs interview as well as coru related with ireland those who have interested to join any of these groups can just whatsapp me i will be giving my whatsapp number as well as my email address in my description box it another glad news for radiographer family or for all the medical practitioners or all those who are in medical sectors is that the, especially for allied health professionals that uh ministry of abu dhabi that for had exam abu dhabi have given some relaxation that once the ministry have changed their rule that uh, the uh, registration from a government body will only be accepted so many of them have uh, rejected their data flow now ab that we have changed their rule the ministry have changed their rule that they are accepting the registration of a private professional body is also accepted so those who have got two years of experience or two or three years of experience can directly do the licensing or the data flow and you can take your date and appear for the hard exam since private body registration is accepted and many of them are appearing for the exam so it is also a glad news for the allied health professionals so if you are liking my channel if you like my video don't forget to share like and subscribe and enable the bell icon too so that you will receive the notifications of all the videos i am uploading so patiently watch till the end and stay tuned let's begin part 6 tutoring of radiotherapy i have already done one session related with radiotherapy that is part 5 those who have not yet watched part 5 have a watch to that video since it is a continuation of part 5 so let's begin the today's questions so the question number 55 which statement of cell cycle is not true option a it consists of mitosis and interphase option b the cell's dna replicates during g1 option c a cell can remain in g1 for weeks or even longer and option d is most proteins are formed throughout all subphase of interphase the answer is option b the cells dna replicates during g1 which is not true related with a cell cycle so let's see the explanation that is the cell cycle and cell death the cell proliferation cycle is defined by two time periods the first one is the mitosis that is the m phase where division takes place the period of dna synthesis is the s phase the s and the m portions of the cell cycle are separated by two periods that is a gap that is g1 and g2 when respectively dna has not yet been synthesized it is a one reason the second thing has been synthesized but other metabolic processes are taking place so the cell proliferation is defined by two time periods that is the mitosis m phase as well as the s phase the time between successive division that is mitosis is called the cell cycle time 
and the cell cycle time for mammalian cells that for mammals is of the order of 10 to 20 hours so let's see how it's happening in the case of s phase that is dna synthesis is usually in the range of 6 to 8 hours m phase is less than 1 hour g2 is in the range of 2 to 4 hours G1 is in the range of 1 to 8 hours. In general, the cells are most radiosensitive in the M, that is the mitotic, as well as the G2 phases, whereas they are most radio resistant in the late S phase. Radiosensitive means sensitive to radiation. Radio resistant means resistant to radiation. Moving on to the next question, question number 56. That is a half-life period of a radioactive element X is same as the mean lifetime of another element Y. Initially, they have same number of atoms. So, it have been denoted two radioactive elements. One is given as X and the another is as Y. And the one represents as the half-life period of a radioactive element. And the another represents the mean lifetime. And both these X and Y are having the same number of atoms. So, let's see the option. The option A is that X will decay faster than Y. Option B is Y will decay faster than X. Option C is X and Y will decay at the same rate after one half-life period and option D is Y and X have same decay rate initially. The answer is option B, Y will decay faster than X. So let's see the explanation. This is a problem related question so you have to note it down in your notebook as if I am uh, saying so that you will be clearly understand this. So a rate of decay is usually denoted by this equation that is dn by dt is equal to minus lambda n. So, let's see each one in detail. So, what is n? n is the original number of atoms and lambda is a decay constant. And it is represented by a negative sign. So, this negative sign indicates the decay or the reduction in atom with Time. As you all know, a radioactive element will be decay with time. That is mean by half-life. Half means it is reducing to half. The um, it, it is decaying and reducing. So, as you all know, so it is denoted by the symbol negative sign. Okay. Then the half-life. The equation for half-life is T half is equal to 0. 693 divided by lambda whereas the mean life is denoted by 1 by lambda it is given that from the equation if you go through the equation you will understand that the half life period of x is same as the mean life of y so these two half life is equal to mean life so t half x x is the one element is equal to mean life of y. So, then we are determining that equation that is t half what we have seen above it is 0 0.693 divided by lambda then the upcoming x is coming there is equal to 1 by lambda y it is the mean life. Then we are cross multiplying you just do it in your notebook. So, la Lambda x is equal to 0 0.693 into lambda y. This is what you will be getting when you cross multiply. So, from that it is clear that lambda y is greater than lambda x. So, initial number of atoms that is n is the same for both radioactive material x and y. Higher the decay constant faster the decay. So, we are coming into a conclusion that radioactive element Y will decay faster from this MO equation we have find out. You just do it in your notebook so that you will be clearly understanding. 
Moving on to the next question, question number 57. The difference between soft and hard X-ray is of option A velocity, option B intensity, option C frequency and option D is polarization. The answer is option C frequency. The penetrative power of X-rays depends upon their wavelength which depends upon frequency. The frequency of a longer wavelength X-ray is lower so their energy is smaller. Hence their penetrating power is weaker and they are called the soft X-ray. While the penetrating power of a shorter wavelength X-ray is stronger and they are called the hard or highly penetrating X-rays. So depending upon the frequency, the X-rays are denoted by whether it is a soft X-ray or a hard X-ray. Moving on to the next question, question number 58. Which rays are not the portion of electromagnetic spectrum? Option A, alpha rays, option B, X-rays, option C, micro rays and option D, radio waves. The answer is option A, alpha rays. The electromagnetic spectrum consists of radio waves, micro waves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet rays, X-rays and gamma rays. Moving on to the next question, question number 59. The correct sequence of an increasing wavelength of a given radiation source is Option A. Radioactive sources X-ray to crystal oscillator source vapor lamp Option B. Radioactive sources X-ray to sodium vapor lamp or crystal oscillator Option C. is X-ray to radioactive sources crystal oscillator or sodium vapor lamp and Option D. is X-ray tube, crystal oscillator, radioactive sources or sodium vapor lamp. The answer is option B, radioactive sources, X-ray tube, sodium vapor lamp and crystal oscillator. And it is depending upon the increasing wavelength of a radioactive source. In order of increasing frequency and decreasing wavelength, these are radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet radiation, X-rays and gamma rays. Moving on to the next question, question number 60. What is the range of frequency for ultrasonic wave? Option A, 1 kilohertz. Option B, 5 kilohertz. Option C, 50 kilohertz. And option D is 100 kilohertz. The answer is option C, 50 kilohertz. Ultrasonic wave is defined as inaudible sound with higher frequency for human. That is a frequency of which generally exceeds about 20 kilohertz, which is not audible to the human ear. Moving on to the next question, question number 61. The cathode rays are made to pass between the poles of a magnet perpendicular to axis. The effect of the magnet is Option A. To increase the velocity of rays. Option B. To deflect them towards north pole. Option C. To deflect them towards south pole. And Option D. To deflect them upwards above the plane of paper. The answer is option D to deflect them upwards above the plane of paper. The force on cathode ray which consists as you all know the force on cathode ray which consists of electron particles. Electron, electron is a negative sign. Due to perpendicular magnetic field which is given as the force that is the force of electron that is velocity is the B. And B is the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the plane of velocity and magnetic field. So a force of cathode ray which consists of which particle? The electron particle is coming perpendicular to the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the plane of velocity and the magnetic field. So the cathode rays are deflected upwards above the plane of paper. Moving on to the next question, question number 62. Gamma rays are deflected, option A, in an electric field, not 
but not by a magnetic field option b a magnetic field but not by an electric field option c both electric and magnetic field and option d is neither electric nor magnetic field the answer is option d neither electric nor magnetic field let's see the explanation the gamma rays carry no charge they are neither deflected by the electric field nor by a magnetic field moving on to the next question question number 63 photo cell is a device used to option a store photons option b measure light intensity option c convert photon energy into mechanical energy and option d store electrical energy for replacing storage battery the answer is option b to measure the light intensity the number of electrons can be measured which is directly proportional to the intensity of radiation hence intensity can be measured using the photocell question number 64 in the x ray tube is working at 20 kv then the minimum wavelength of x ray will be option a 0.62 a a means armstrong option b 0.93 a option c 0.47 a and option d 0.31 a The answer is option A, 0.62 A. A means Armstrong. Let's see how we can find out this. So the minimum wavelength, that is minimum wavelength means a lambda. Lambda is a uh, formula given for wavelength, which can be uh, find out from this given equation. That is H C by E V. H C by E V. You can write it down in your notebook, and you can just find out. So H is the Planck's constant, which is having the value 6.63 into 10 raised to minus 37. C is the speed of light, that is 3 into 10 raised to 8. The charge of electron is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb, and uh, this can be expressed in the above equation. that is planck's constant is given velocity of light is given the charge of electron is given and from the above equation so from sorry from the above equation you can understand the x ray tube is working at 20 kV which is given as 20 into 10 raised to 3 kilo kilo means 1000 that is 10 raised to 3 which can be find out as 0.62 into 10 raised to minus 10 that is 0.62 armstrong you can just find out in your notebook you just do a calculation question number 65 if an electron jumps from first orbit to third orbit then it will option a absorb energy option b release energy option c have no difference in energy option d it cannot jump from first orbit to third orbit the answer is option a absorb energy when the electron jumps from an orbit of lower energy that is n equal to 1 to the orbit of higher energy that is n equal to 3 that is from first orbit to third orbit the energy is absorbed Hope you all are happy with today's session. As uh, so with that, I am coming to the end of today's session. So, if you have any queries, you can directly mail me or you can WhatsApp me. And those who need uh, any textbooks for studies, also you can just mail me. Uh, that is my mail address and my WhatsApp number will be given in my description box. So as as always, see that please share, like, subscribe, and please do support me. Uh, so with that, I am coming to the end of today's session. So patiently wait for my next 